Hello, welcome to a new Oxygen XML webinar. Uh, every Wednesday at the same time, uh, that is 8 a.m. Pacific time and uh, 11 a.m. U.S. Eastern time, 5 p.m. Central Europe time, we have this uh, Oxygen XML webinars. We try to cover different technologies, uh, different products that we uh, uh, provide, different tools. Uh, and today we'll talk about uh, uh, the web-based uh, XML editor, the web-based authoring that we provide, and uh, look into uh, different ways that this can be used. Uh, and I invited my colleague uh, Bogdan Dumitru from uh, the web authoring team to uh, show you some ideas. In the background, uh, my name is George Bina. I will be answering your questions and uh, also uh, we have also uh, the project manager for the web author, uh, my colleague Christian Talod, who will also be um, answering questions for you. Let's move on to some useful information, some logistics. We record all our webinars and the recordings are made available on the event page and also on the Oxygen XML YouTube channel. So you will be able to come back to this recording and uh, you know, see more details maybe for some part of that. Please ask questions at any time. As I mentioned, me and my colleague Christian will be uh, uh, available to answer questions as we go, either on the questions panel on the GoToWebinar uh, uh, application. If you prefer to use Twitter, then mark your questions with the Oxygen XML hashtag or address them to the Oxygen XML account so we can easily spot them. So we will have a dedicated time at the end of the webinar to go through your questions uh, and answer them so everyone can hear the answer but please ask them uh, as we go because it will be easier uh, this way to uh, remember you know every question and uh, otherwise by the, by the end of the webinar maybe you will not remember what you wanted to ask. So let me welcome uh, Bogdan. Hi, Bogdan. Hi, everyone. Thank you, George, for the kind introduction. So let's begin. Tailored authoring experience with Oxygen XML Web Author. So now let's take a look at the agenda for today. First, we will see how markdown documents can be validated. Then we will see how to create text to markup corrections which is which are like shorthands for XML markup. Then we will see in place actions and outline view, a new feature in latest version of Oxygen Web Author. And last but not least, diff service. Now, what is Oxygen XML Web Author? Well, it is a web-based XML authoring tool that supports primarily XML documents, but supports also Markdown. The XML, uh, it supports editing XML documents with custom vocabularies, and it have a few of the most must used vocabularies built in. Also, it connects to the majority of CMSs and it has stronger review capabilities. Now, let's take a look at how WebAuthor looks like. This is, this is the editing page of a sample XML document. You can see in the center the editing pane and in the left and right side, two side panels with some auxiliary functions. Nothing too fancy about that. Why I choose this title? Why is the authoring experience tailored? Well, I want to to point out that WebAuthor is highly customizable. And here I listed some of the some of the greatest features that prove it. It has first, it has a strong SDK 
you can create plugins with a powerful Java and JavaScript API that allows you to create a whole bunch of things that depends on your use cases or your workflows. The documents are stylized with CSS, so everyone can change how a, a paragraph or an element it's rendered in web author. And many other features like form controls, custom document types, some URL parameters, and others. And I want to note that the features presented in this presentation, in this webinar, can be tuned to your needs. Every feature, every, every feature have a degree of customizability. Let's move on. Now let's talk about Markdown. I think everyone knows uh, or saw how Markdown document looks like. It has a simple syntax where you where you can mark a title with simple with a simple characters before it, where uh, list items are marked like this. Well, it has strong points that it's easy to learn and easy to write, but also have weak points. It lacks the authoring guidance. For example, here I forgot to to cut the, tra the tailing semicolon at the end of the list item. This character shouldn't be here. And as an author, I don't have feedback from the editor that I entered something wrong. The second weak point is that it lacks the syntax it has a very lax syntax rules. For example, here, the first title of the document is a second level title, it's not the main title. But in Oxygen, we overcome those weak points of Markdown by adding the possibility to validate Markdown documents with Schematron. Schematron is an XML uh, language that allows you to create assertions for uh, for a XML document. Here, for example, you can see in the validation side, sorry, the validation side panel from WebAuthor that presents two validation problems: one about the title, and the second about the list item. Now, I want to explain how Markdown is validated with Schematron. <clears throat> the Markdown document is first converted to XHTML because Schematron works only with XML documents. Then, the converted uh, X, uh, XHTML is validated against the schematron provided with its query parameter. And the set of validation problems or errors are backed mapped into the original document. And WebAuthor can, can highlight the exact line and column or particular word that is not valid, uh, uh, is not valid, or that viol violates a specific uh, rule defined in Schematron. Next. Now, if Markdown have a have validation, why we still love to write XML? Why? XML is still highly used. Well, XML have a few features that Markdown still lacks. For example, XML has have a semantic tags, which Markdown doesn't and cannot have. 
The other feature can be that XML have uh, some um, uh, languages like Dita have features like content reuse, where you can write a paragraph for a variable once and refer it in many other documents. And in Oxygen, XML can, can be easy to write too. Because of the two features, in place actions and text to markup automatic conversions. Now let's see each feature individually. First, what are text to markup conversions? You can see them like shorthands for fragments of XML code. Where in Markdown you will type three backticks to represent a code block. In XML, you will have to enter the element name of the code block and then to write the, the content of it. But I've configured the data framework to automatically insert the code, the code block element when the author type the three backticks, like in Markdown, and then if it presses spacebar. Let me show you. So, here, I create a new paragraph, and then, A new code block appear, but you can use this feature in many other ways. And I have another example for you. If someone wants to to enter a note and doesn't know that a specialized element for note exists in this vocabulary, it will simply type note spacebar and the automatic conversion to enter the, the node element. Besides that, I've, I've created shorthands for tables. For example, if I want to enter a table with two columns, I simply hit space and should appear. Oh, sorry. Uh, uh, here I use the public site instead of my personal web author. Now let me show you again how to insert a table. Now the table appears. But what if you want the three columns table? Then you insert three characters like this and then press space. Voila. But those are very simple fragments to be inserted, which you can insert with the actions on the toolbar already. Another use case for text to markup conversions is to insert large amounts of fragments like this. When you want to document a menu, a new menu or something like this, you will have to enter many elements. And if if we go to the XML behind, we can see here that this is a very big fragment to be inserted manually. It will take a while to insert every element in individually. So instead of inserting this element and this element and this and so on, 
you can simply define the shortened for it, like we can see here. This is the example for inserting a table with five columns. All you have to do is to create a structure autocorrect XML file into your document type, in, inside which you have to specify first the shorthand for the fragment inside this element. Inside, you will put directly the fragment, like this. Well, I mentioned document type. What is a document type? Well, every vocabulary is defined as a document type in Oxygen. A document type is a collection of attributes for a vocabulary, like the DTDs which validate the document, or the actions for it, or the CSS styles that change how elements are rendered in web author. If you define an action here, you can simply add it to the toolbar menu from here. Okay. Now let's move on to in place actions. Here a screenshot from WebAuthor, and you can see down below the actually in place actions. Those can be seen like in light toolbars, for example. And you can define what actions to be presented for each element or for a group of elements. In place actions are defined with only CSS, so you don't have to know some programming language that is hard to learn, only CSS. And by using the available form controls, WebAuthor have many form controls that you can add in your editing view. You can create like submission forms, for example. Note that I left the link here in this corner where you can access the documentation for every feature. Now let's take a look how in place actions works. Here, you can see if I hover the cursor of the, over this element, this button shows up. And if I press it, the in-place actions appear. And I can press, for example, this action that inserts a table. It's easy. You can see that every paragraph have this button, this plus sign. And at the end, there are another button that shows up on other actions that, that wouldn't have place in line, like those ones. Okay, let's move on. And you can group those in place actions or create them using less. Less 
is a uh, language that allows you to write CSS that can be called like functions. Let me show you an example. This is a screenshot from one of our documents from uh, from the document type associated of uh, the document type of the uh, the lightweight data. You can see that all actions are defined here based on the library less where the mixins are defined. But those are very geeky stuff. Next. In the last version of WebAuthor, we added the outlined view. The outlined view allows you to easily navigate through documents. You can grasp the, the structure of the document without switching to the text page. And you can do much more. Every item in the outline view have a contextual menu with some actions, some useful actions. You can use it to drag and drop elements to rearrange rearrange the the, the elements as you like easily. Also, the selection from the, the outline view is synchronized with the editor. Let's take a look. Here is the outline. <coughs> you can see that if I click here, the selection inside the editor changes and uh, it automatically scroll into the selected element. But also if I change the selection from the editor, the selection from outline changes. The outline have two modes the contents mode and the structure mode. The first one, the contents, allows you to see the document like a table of content. When you, it is mainly used when you want to focus on the, the titles of, or the, the main sections of the document. The other one, structure mode, allows you to see every element from the editor. You can see that my selection inside the editor is right before it is code element. But let's see the contextual menu actions. If you want to insert an child or an element before or after, you can use those actions. For example, subtitle. It may be e easier to insert an element from the outline because you may see clear what is the structure of the document? In the web author, if you have tags displayed in line, it, it may not be clearly what element is here if you not look at the breadcrumb here. But also you can switch to Pull tags from here and you will see all tags names inside the editor. But this for me at least is ugly. 
So I always keep tags in this mode. Another great thing that Outline offers is that you can rearrange large portions of the document very easily. For example, let's move the section tree first. You can do this by dragging the section like this. So easy. I want to, to mention that um, you can customize the contents mode for each individual document type. For every XML specification, uh, for every XML vocabulary, there is a set of elements that um, mark the headers of or the sections of a document. For example, in Dogbook, we have the sect element that define a section. And we configure the outline to present the headers, the sections in the contents mode. This is useful because if you have a very large Dogbook, uh, dogbook uh, document, the structure mode uh, will be so practical to see what are the topics in this document. Okay, I think that's all about the outline view. Now let's move on. <clears throat> now I want to talk about the diff that WebAuthor offers. Well, WebAuthor offers a side-by-side -side diff that highlights every change in the in the documents. Sorry. Let's take a look. Here is the example that I've shown in the presentation. You can see here a small toolbar with buttons to navigate through changes inside the document. If you press it, a change will be selected. If you press it again, the previous change will be selected. So you won't miss any change. And you can also navigate the documents from the two scroll bars, one on the left and one on the right side, like this. Note that on the right side, we have a so-called range ruler that presents every change in the every change between the two documents this is useful because uh, you can take a look here on this range ruler and see how the change are distributed if uh, you can see clearly that, uh, for example, in a document, all changes may be at the end of, uh, of the documents. But how you, how you can use this feature? How you can use the diff? 
Well, let's say that you edit a document and before saving it, you want to see what were the changes you've, you've made. You have to open here this menu and click this button, this action. Now you can see what are the changes before you save them. For example, here I do a nasty stuff and I uh, change some uh, numbers from this long ID. If I only look here, it's hard for me to understand what are exactly the differences. But I can do this. I can accept all changes made with change tracking. Then I call a diff again. And look, now it's very easy to understand what is the new ID that we, it will be committed. Here in this dialog, you can see also a button to change the, the tags presented. So if you, if you want, you can hide the tags by clicking here for a click for a clearer view note that uh, diff offered by webauthor is a is offered like a service this means that you can create an URL with two query two query parameters, one for the document from the left side and one with the document from the right side. You can create this URL and send it someone to someone. When an URL like this is opened, it will show automatically the diff. This is very useful because you can embed diff in your existing review workflows, for example. Or why not? You can embed diff in a CMS, maybe. Now, let's take a look about how we use diff inside uh, our documentation review workflow. We, we have a, a review workflow where each issue is, a, is documented by the technical writer and the, the subject matter expert, let's say the developer, takes a final look about what was documented and it have to approve it. Actually, it have to move the issue on the on another state. We call it documentation reviewed state of a particular Jira issue. Before this, the subject matter expert would have to open the open a Top, open the topic before changes before changes were made on a screen and on another screen it will open the latest version of the topic documented by the technical writer and it will manually have to find out what were the changes and that was a time-consuming process and everyone hated it 
but with diff, the subject matter expert receives a diff link that he only opens and in an instant it will see uh, the differences between the two documents. What does a writer documented for an issue? This is very convenient because the subject matter expert it will only focus on what matters the most. How we do this? Well, we create a review bot that after the technical writer commits a change into the manual, the review bot looks after the new commit and creates the diff links. The diff links, sorry, when the technical writer made a commit, it uh, adds the issue ID into the commit message. So the review bot takes the issue ID, creates the the diff links and then go to the Jira issue and add a comment with what should be reviewed by the subject matter expert. And then the subject matter expert will receive an email from Jira that the review bot just commented on his issue and it will start reviewing the documentation. Let's see an example live. Now, let's say that I'm the technical writer who just made some changes in this document. Now, I have to commit it. But before, let me check the differences that nothing uh, wrong will uh, be committed. Okay, I inserted this and this and this. Okay, everything looks fine. Now let's commit it. Like I said, every commit should start with the Jira issue ID. For example, in my case, I document the I document this issue ID. Okay, this is the message. Now let's commit it. Success. Great. Now I will switch to the the subject matter expert persona. Now, the subject matter expert, what will see? If he opens the Jira issue, it will see a comment was added by the review bot that adds the diff link. And if I open it, Now I can see the changes. That is very easy. Hmm. And in just about five seconds, I can approve the documentation on this issue. And I can move the issue into the next state. So easy. But if something is wrong, I can comment here, right? right before the technical writer commit or I can open the source and uh, fix it by myself. 
so easy. This is how we use the diff that WebAuthor offers inside our review workflow. Now, um, but what you don't have the time or the knowledge or the I don't know what to to integrate the WebAuth or diff into your review workflow or to create your own review workflow based on that. Well, I have great news because the version 3.0 of Oxygen Content Fusion integrates the diff. So, what is Oxygen Content Fusion? Well, Oxygen Content Fusion is a collaboration platform that offer out of the box review workflow. And it embed web author and it takes full advantage of the diff tool. You can use Oxygen Content Fusion around your existing um, workflows. You may keep your documentation on GitHub, I don't know, or on another CMS. It doesn't matter. You can use Oxygen Content Fusion to review it. And it's such a great thing because you can collaborate great inside this platform. Now, let's see how Oxygen Content Fusion managed to integrate the diff. Well, here is Oxygen Content Fusion. You can see that here is WebAuthor embedded in, in the Content Fusion interface. Being on collaboration platforms, you can see the activity on this document or this task. And you can see things like messages, the subject matter expert and technical writer can easily use this platform to exchange questions or hints or any other things. But what is great about Content Fusion is that it tracks all changes made to the files it presents in it presents them in the task activity here and you can see every state or every change made to a particular file for example if i press this link this diff link now i can see what are the latest changes that bogdan me to this file. Just cut this line and fill it with what should be. But let's take a look what was here. What was changed made by the John? Hmm, he added it. Okay. You can see how easy it is to understand the evolution of a document in Oxygen Content Fusion. Now, with it, the documents are not only stateless or lifeless pieces of information. Here, you can see the evolution of the document. Okay. And you may notice how great it can be integrated, how great the diff can be integrated in other, in other applications. Okay. I think that was all. Thank you everyone for listening and uh, 
I hope you have great questions for me. Thank you, Bogdan. Um, yeah, so uh, really interesting to see the uh, integration basically of the XML authoring and XML div uh, that can be reached basically through uh, just by following some URLs in, as in uh, Bogdan example, uh, you can push these URLs into your existing workflows uh, like he presented with Jira uh, where uh, uh, different people involved in an issue can just follow uh, a link to see uh, the div, the visual div between uh, two XML documents or just follow uh, uh, a link to be able to provide some corrections to immediately access the XML authoring. So as uh, he presented in, in this example, pushing these links into JIRA, you can think about how you can apply similar uh, ideas to maybe your workflow tools that may be different. Or, so basically in any place where you can have uh, a URL, even in a PDF document or uh, in any HTML-based system, uh, maybe through an email or so and so on, you can provide access to people to XML authoring or uh, to uh, the diff, uh, uh, the visual diff part, so somebody can easily understand uh, the changes between two documents. Now let's uh, go through the questions we received so far. Please feel free to ask, ask more questions. Uh, so we can uh, go through them and uh, provide some answers. Uh, I haven't got the resources available to develop a custom tailored implementation. Do you have uh, contacts who might be happy to do that for us? Uh, well, many of uh, the customizations may be done by also by end users. Uh, as you've seen, sometimes it's a configuration file, uh, sometimes there are some CSS uh, fragments that can be added. We do also have uh, on our website listed uh, a number of uh, partners and uh, as far as I know, uh, some of them were involved in uh, helping end users uh, customize, uh, Oxygen customize sometimes the technology they are using uh, to more to their specific needs. What percentage of Oxygen users use the web author? Um, I'm afraid I do not have a specific percentage, but uh, uh, the web author is a much younger product than the desktop version, uh, but we really put a lot of development effort in the last years uh, towards the, the web editing and collaboration, um, and uh, it recovered, let's say, or it, it reached a level uh, uh, where it has a lot of the functionality from the desktop version, and also the number of users uh, increased and we have uh, people that use uh, the web part for collaboration and for involving uh, non-technical users and maybe also as uh, Bogdan presented automating different workflows uh, by providing access to authoring or to uh, the diff part but we also have users that uh, do not use the desktop uh, version of Oxygen, but only the web part. So, yeah, that's also an interesting aspect. For a custom schema, how can I map table tags of XML with the Oxygen tags? Or for example, if my schema, in my schema, bold is called strong, how Oxygen understand this, understands this and where we need to map. So 
in order for oxygen to present uh, an XML document uh, rendered as a table, as bold, as an image, as a link, and so on, oxygen uses uh, CSS to provide the styles uh, for the XML uh, elements. So you can use CSS to match on uh, specific XML structures and uh, specify how uh, that should be styled. So match on an element and say display table, for instance, or then on another element and say this is a table row, uh, uh, this is a table cell, or in the, the specific case, you can just match on strong in the CSS and specify font weight, uh, column bold and that will render that element as bold. Also, uh, I think Bogdan also covered with the inline actions and that part we use CSS even uh, for a little bit more power. So you can push in uh, within the document structure, you can push actions uh, that will make it easy for users to interact with the document. So document, the document does not have to be necessarily uh, something static uh, and you interact with the document only through the toolbar or, and so on. You can push actions uh, directly within the document and through, again, through the CSS part and with the form controls part, you can also use uh, uh, drop downs or um, custom widgets directly into the document. So uh, the document is more interactive in this way. And uh, it's, that also helps a lot with uh, getting subject matter experts or uh, other types, you know, users that are not aware uh, about the XML structure because they can interact with the document through the available actions that are uh, within the document itself. Um, then we have two questions actually. Uh, how do we add the structure autocorrect XML to a document type? And uh, uh, where do we put the structure autocorrect uh, XML? Uh, does that file have to have that specific name? Uh, and uh, this is part. Um, so Oxygen, and Oxygen provides support for an XML vocabulary like data, dogbook, TI, and so on. Uh, it does that uh, through something that we call an oxygen framework or, or a document type. Uh, and as part of defining that, uh, there are a number of different resources that uh, you can set for that. And one of them is this structure autocorrect XML file. So this needs to be added in a folder that is uh, defined for that framework as uh, a folder where the framework will look for resources and it has to have that uh, name. Uh, and uh, uh, my colleague Christy, I see that he responded also to this and provided specific links to the documentation. So if you uh, search into our documentation for the structure autocorrect XML, uh, you should find uh, probably those topics that uh, refer it and uh, uh, how you can set it up more easily. Uh, how are operations added to the toolbar? Um, so when you create custom actions, you can do that either through the CSS and then uh, provide these actions in line in the document, or uh, as part of that framework customization, we have a um, uh, visual builder, let's say, for defining your actions by customizing existing operations. Like we have an insert fragment operation, for instance, where you can just provide the fragment to be inserted and that will become an action. And then uh, we have also a visual tool in that uh, uh, on the document type configuration dialog that allows you to say this action will go on the toolbar in this place or will go into the main menu or will go into the contextual menu or will appear to the user in the when they press enter in the document. 
So you can control then uh, where that action goes through that document type configuration uh, part uh, where you configure the framework in the desktop version of Oxygen that's available. How are the complex operations uh, mapped with the uh, custom table schema to Oxygen? Uh, so, I'm not sure uh, I, but, but we do have an API that allows you to uh, define support for tables if you have a very different type of table. Usually, uh, if the table matches uh, the ones from DITA or the one from HTML, then you can use the existing support that we we already have. Uh, to insert a table, again, you can just use uh, something like the insert fragment operation to insert a table, but we have API that allows you also to define your own uh, custom operations that will uh, can be those operations can be written in Java or even in JavaScript or in XSLT or XQuery. So depending on the language that you want to you know and you want to use, you can uh, define custom operations in any of these uh, uh, languages. Is the outline view customizable? Is there documentation for doing this? Uh, Yes, the outline view uh, is uh, uh, can be customized through an XML-based configuration file, uh, and uh, there is documentation in the web author user guide uh, for that. Once I upload a custom framework to the web author. Uh, how can I open my template and edit? Or should I need to connect some CMS or load XML document? So once you add a custom framework to the web author, the available, uh, so a framework defines also new document templates, for instance. So those templates will be available also in the web author, but uh, the web author uh, edits content from a specific repository. And we have uh, a number of um, uh, existing connectors for the web author, uh, allowing the web author to connect to any WebDAV uh, repository, for instance, any Git repository. With, uh, we have also specific connectors for GitHub, GitLab, Bitbucket that implement the pull request workflows. Uh, we have a connector for SharePoint. Uh, we have connectors for Google Drive and Dropbox, and we uh, for Perforce, for IBM FileNet, and, and so on. So there are uh, quite a, a good number of existing connectors. And we also provide uh, API to create your own connectors to connect to any uh, repositories and these APIs are uh, both we provide both uh, uh, a Java API and also a REST API which is a lot simpler let's say a lot easier to implement because then you can choose uh, any uh, language let's say to implement that uh, as long as you, you just provide three REST endpoints uh, to browse for a file to save the content and to load the content of a file. So that will be enough uh, for the web author to connect to uh, any uh, repository. Um, okay. Uh, are there role and permissions uh, in content fusion? Uh, that is, the uh, author can change only his document or add, delete some, editor can edit all documents. Uh, 
So just to make it clear, uh, content fusion is basically uh, an example of an application that uses the web author. And uh, uh, I think Bogdan uh, used that more to, to show uh, the diff part of the web author, how we uh, took advantage of that in the context of content fusion. Uh, of the next following release of context fu content fusion, uh, who is due really soon. And actually we do have next uh, Wednesday, uh, uh, the following webinar, uh, Oxygen XML webinar will cover actually context content fusion. Um, and you can see more about uh, uh, the new additions and uh, uh, what can be done. But basically, right now, Content Fusion has uh, distinguishes, let's say, between two users, the owner of a task and the people that collaborate uh, on that task. Um, and uh, you can... Uh, for structuring as a as an owner, you have more uh, options to control. For instance, if you want to force track changes on uh, on a task to uh, download the task uh, and so on. Um, while uh, being only a reviewer, you can just uh, perform some actions. It is possible also through CSS to control. Uh, editing on specific parts of a document or uh, on specific uh, files uh, that are made. Uh, we have uh, also in the CSS, we have uh, something like, uh, it's called uh, Oxy Editable. So you can match on an element, for instance, and say uh, Oxy Editable false and that uh, like an extension in the CSS that you specify that the tables, for instance, if you match on a table, uh, are not editable. And then anyone that will use, uh, will access the document through that CSS will not be able to change tables, just an example. Uh, is there any sample code uh, of opening a file using the REST API. Um, and I think maybe I see that Christy responded to that. Uh, but for some reason I cannot see. Uh, so, um, so there is a plugin. Uh, and uh, we have on GitHub under oxygenxml.com organization, there is a web auto rest plugin. So if you just filter the existing projects from the Oxygen XML organization on GitHub, uh, typing rest plugin, probably you should be able to uh, see uh, this, uh, this plugin and you can start from from this one and you know uh, modify it to uh, your specific needs. Uh, how did you open the Content Fusion browser? How did you get there? Uh, well, so Content Fusion again, it's a it's a different application from the web author. It's basically an example of an application built. Uh, on top of the web author. Uh, and we provide uh, uh, a demo server uh, that you can access, you can find that also on our website. And uh, you can uh, um, access it directly in the browser, or you can also, there's a Content Fusion connector in the desktop version of Oxygen that will allow you to connect to this demo server uh, and uh, upload content and then you will obtain a URL that you can share with the, the people you want to collaborate with. More about Content Fusion, as I mentioned, will be next week when we have a dedicated webinar for, uh, for Content Fusion. 
And then Quantum Fusion can be also installed on premise. So then you'll have your own server and you can connect with from the desktop version of Oxygen to that or access that directly into the browser. How is uh, uh, WebAuthor hosted? So basically we, we have an on-premise uh, uh, distribution so you can download WebAuthor and uh, uh, install that uh, on your server. Um, but we do have the demo version that uh, is uh, generally available. Uh, we host that on uh, Amazon uh, AWS. Uh, so, uh, and probably if you want, you can also host, uh, download the uh, uh, Content Fusion and host that uh, also on AWS or on other uh, cloud service or even on your uh, own server from within your organization. Is there any sam sample uh, resource documentation available? Uh, I think that was a follow-up question to, but I deleted the questions. Um, about the web uh, auto REST plugin. Uh, it was in uh, a follow-up to the uh, web auto REST plugin for connecting to uh, a custom repository. Um, and uh, there is actually a readme file in that project that contains uh, uh, some documentation but also in uh, uh, the web author user guide there, there are also some entries about that. Uh, and uh, I see that probably Bogdan responded also that there is a doc link on some slides and the slides will be uh, made available on the event page. So if you come back uh, in a couple of days to the uh, event on uh, our website, so under uh, on our website there's an uh, company events and then you find the past events section and then uh, you can find the, uh, also the uh, the slides there so we usually post uh, for webinars not only the recording but also some additional resources like slides examples sample files and so on where were available and so on Is it possible to cut and paste actions instead of going to the wizard if we want to bring them to another context uh, and then uh, maybe adapt them? Um, yes, uh, uh, the the that dialogue should allow you to do that, but we also are working. Uh, towards our next release to have a scripting language for uh, uh, basically extending frameworks. So uh, we already have something that uh, works in the current development. So there, there will be something that will be released in the, ne in the next version that will allow you to uh, use a scripting language, an XML-based language that will uh, allow you to say, uh, to extend uh, another framework with uh, additional actions. We also defined, uh, uh, su created support for defining a custom action as an XML uh, configuration file, let's say, and then you can just take that action and use it in uh, different frameworks and maybe just modify it a bit uh, in a different context. So that's something that we, uh, consider and we'll provide even better support than uh, what we have now. Um, can you do transformations uh, in WebAuthor? Uh, not uh, out of the box, but you can 
create a, a, a plugin for the web author uh, to uh, perform transformations uh, uh, on a server maybe. Uh, we are working actually to provide some uh, publishing support to the web author but in the uh, in a in a in a future in the future yeah so uh, there's a clarification yes that uh, copy paste and editing uh, for custom actions for a document type and uh, this uh, scripting support that we have and the, the 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 support to define actions externally in an xml file uh, outside the dot framework file basically allow exactly for for that so basically you can just copy such an xml file and uh, in a different framework and uh, just modify it a bit if you need it, that action to be different or just reuse it in uh, in that context and i think we reached the end of the questions so let me try to become the presenter again uh, show my screen okay um, to finalize with uh, some information about the upcoming events uh, we scheduled in total eight webinars after our uh, last release uh, every wednesday as i mentioned and we uh, have two more webinars uh, so next week we hope you will join us for more on the collaboration part by exploring oxygen content fusion uh, and then uh, we will the following week we'll look into the uh, PDF output more from uh, with a focus on the data PDF output uh, using the oxygen PDF chemistry and also using the uh, oxygen publishing engine is the publishing part from oxygen extracted as a, a tool that you can use uh, from a script or from a continuous integration server so outside of the desktop version of oxygen for, for example to help you automate uh, different transformations different processes and uh, yeah because why we did that because uh, once you have something that works in oxygen and then uh, you want to use that outside then you had people had to and replicate, uh, trying to make it work, uh, trying from scratch. So Oxygen Publishing Engine just allows you to uh, make sure you will have the same transformation that uh, you notice that works and you test it in Oxygen, be able to run that uh, from a script or a, a continuous integration server uh, to automate the publishing part. Um, our upcoming events uh, are listed uh, at this URL, uh, the events program. Actually, you can, um, let me try to get this here. So on our website under company events, uh, you will reach this uh, events program URL and uh, you see the upcoming events. Uh, so the Dita North America, so we have two more webinars and then the Dita North America conference and Dita Europe, unfortunately, or not, it was not possible to uh, to take place, place this year. So uh, the Comtech, Comtech, the company that organizes them, uh, replace them with this uh, uh, online event context. Um, where we'll have uh, a number of uh, sessions. And uh, yeah, so that will be also, if you are interested in DITA, that will be a very interesting event, I think. And also the following uh, webinars that I uh, 
uh, just mentioned earlier. Um, that being said, we are really at the end of this webinar. Thank you, Bogdan, uh, for presenting. Uh, thank you, Christy, for answering uh, many of the questions uh, uh, during the webinar. And thank you all for attending, and hopefully we'll meet you again virtually uh, at another event, and maybe hopefully next year also in person at some uh, uh, conference or meetup or uh, some physical event. So thanks, thank you all, and uh, see you soon. Bye.